Welcome to Built and Deployed, where we talk to customers about how they've deployed their applications and workloads on OCI. Today, we're going to talk uh, more to Specialized, uh, one of the best bike brands uh, out there. Uh, they've been in an amazing situation where uh, bicycle demand has uh, skyrocketed uh, in our pandemic times. Um, and that's put a huge amount of pressure on their supply chain, on manufacturing, and most particularly around their IT. Uh, today, we're with uh, Tommy Pham, who's going to talk a little bit more about what they did on OCI. Uh, we're going to focus specifically on their multi-region deployment uh, for disaster recovery and protection, as well as some of the other use cases around that. Let's switch over to the other diagram. We kind of go up a level, uh, look uh, across multiple sites. Um, can you talk about your thinking behind, you know, this multi-site deployment? Uh, so with the design of going to OCI is that they give us just um, a true disaster recovery, uh, which is now um, that second piece of the DR is running out of the uh, Ashburn. Right? Uh, we have a true replica of, of you know, uh, applications are being replicated, database transactions are also being replicated from Phoenix to Ashburn um, for every committed transactions for uh, EBS and Agiles and all the application tiers. Those binaries are all continuously on the sync mode. They keep that current. They also the ability to scale up, scale down on the DRSI that give us a flexibility when we have a true failover, we can also go in and, and, and scale up when needed because it's on the same, same uh, engineer system. So you're, you're actually doing synchronous replication. Um... Is, is that is that to uh, preserve a certain recovery uh, recovery uh, time objective? What's what's the uh, thinking behind that? Um, we, you know, that's the plan is not to have a, a long outage as much as possible, and uh, so the, the main database mechanism that you know that deliver this is really DataGuard. It's an Oracle product that we implemented it with Oracle. Uh, and that is currently running in an active passive mode and just basically syncing and applying the logs of every transaction committed. So we also use one of the standby databases as a reporting instance. So that's the beauty of that too, is that we can offload a lot of readings and reporting off primary and use a DER for that purpose. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really smart. Mm -hmm. The what were you doing for uh, you know, what were you doing for resiliency prior to uh, deploying DR uh, into Ashburn? We didn't have DR on front. I mean, we were operating on a, on a you know, uh, an HA uh, Spark system, and, and that's only gave us that, you know, HA capability and the, the cost of justifying having a separate set of that hardware uh, somewhere out in a colo facility and somewhere in the country. It just it doesn't make sense, business sense. Right. So it, it must give you a little bit more of a peace of mind, give the business a little bit of a peace of mind to have that uh, ability now to, to fail over. And uh, I like the fact that you're using it for you know, additional, uh, additional capacity for reporting and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, we can, we can offload and we can make the use uh, resources that is not sitting idle, but it can be put to good use for that purpose. And you're you're flowing the traffic. It looks like uh, across our backbone then uh, for yes. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's through the Oracle. Uh, yeah, the Oracle backbone. I think that's like a uh, high speed bandwidth. Uh, we're looking at like thirty milliseconds a month. Uh, I think it's yeah, super fast. I mean, if we could sustain synchronous uh, replication, that's pretty good. Can you talk to me a little bit about the? you know, your use of fast connect, it looks like in some cases you're using fast connect, in some cases you're using VPN. Um, what's, what's the, uh, the thinking behind that? Fast connects allowed us to uh, uh, specialize uh, HQ and then other uh, regions of data warehouse that have this high bandwidth that they can uh, um, you know, do a lot of processing, printings, um, volumes. Um, so it's just really help us to speed up the the network, the pipe that we, we needed. Also, when we first went live, um, did the uh, cutover, we realized that we need a fast connect to order to move you know, close to seven, seven terabytes of data to OCI. And the time was, was the essence. So we had to have fast connect in there to allow this to happen within two days, you know, less than two days. 
printing is another big function that you know uh, that we have to redesign from scratch right rebuild the the, the printing subsystem this is we cannot you know import that from from uh, from the spark system and it plays a major role in that too to uh, you know ship you know hundreds and thousands of reports and labels a day that's something that I, I think most people don't think about the fact that uh, you definitely still need paper uh, labels mm -hmm. in the process, huh? Okay, interesting. Yeah, okay. I I noticed there's uh, some other cloud services as well that you're connecting to. Um, you know, a lot of our customers are multi-cloud and are leveraging other services. Can you talk about that for a few seconds? We we have a uh, product uh, for reporting and uh, BI, uh, which run out of AWS. Uh, Tableau is one example. Uh, SAP is our um, e-com uh, site where it plays a heavily in the face of our um, web logic application server. Uh, and our uh, tax engines also is also a cloud-based vendor um, in the, hosted in either in AWS or, or you know, some other cloud. But, uh, but basically we, we interface uh, heavily with those and uh, I believe there's also a direct connection to uh, Microsoft uh, Azure so that uh, eventually when we implement uh, a single sign-on, we'll also have a direct uh, Azure Active Directory enable via that, uh, that path. Uh, awesome. Well, that was a, uh, a, really, a really great uh, review of what you've done on OCI. Uh, uh, any thoughts on what you're going to do next? Uh, what holds the, what, 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 what's in the future? Well, the, uh, we're embarking on uh, Oracle Integration Cloud uh, APIs. Uh, those are pre-built API that's already available in marketplace. Uh, we're also looking at uh, the investiture of uh, legacy applications. So, you know, SaaS application is one example, and all that is within, you know, within reach in OCI, right? So within the cloud. So those are a future uh, major initiative that we're embarking on. Thanks so much, Tommy, for your time. Uh, I learned a lot, and I'm, I'm really happy we're able to work with you and your company. Thanks well, so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Built and Deployed. Hope to see you soon.